Hi there, in the following video I will answer for you the OCR Core 4 June 2007 question 9. It's uh, a question on vectors, I'm doing a series on vectors. So let's go straight on and see the question. Uh, it's question 9 here and it's for a total of uh, 11 marks. So it's a lot, nice way to end the paper actually. It says that lines L1, L2 and L3 have the following vector equations of their lines. Key points here. This is not a position vector. It's not a, a, a point in space. Okay. It's also uh, not a, a, like a, a normal vector in the sense of magnitude plus direction. It's the equation of a line given in vector form. Now, how you do that, as, as I've shown you before, you have a point on the line, and here's our point on that line, plus a certain amount of the direction. Okay, so here's the direction of the line. Okay, here's a point on the line, here's the direction of the line, the point of the line and the direction of the line. That uniquely defines, that can define any point on the line for us if we have a point and direction. Okay, so L1, L2 and L3 are given by uh, these uh, equations of the line. If we want to find the acute angle between L1 and L2 here, that's what we want to find. Well, all we're interested in is the... Uh, directions of these. Now let me just show you why that is. Let's take L1, okay. L1 is some point in space, this point in space, okay, from, from the origin. So here's the origin, let's say, is this point in space, I'm going to call that point uh, L1, okay, and it's a certain direction. So it's a certain direction here. Okay, so it's, you have to get yourself from uh, 0 to there and then you go along the direction. Okay, L2 is a certain point in space, I'm going to call that point in space L2 over here. Okay, so you've got to get yourself from O to L2, let's say is there, okay, and then the direction along there. So let's say uh, the direction of this line is going like that. Okay, so Here's the vector equation of this line, and here's the vector equation of this line. If you want to work out the angle between the acute angle that the two lines meet at, all you're really interested in is the direction of that line and how it meets the direction of that line. Because wherever they end up meeting, they have the same angle between them. Uh, namely, say that angle there, theta, which would be the same as that angle there. Okay, if you're looking for the acute one. So all you're interested in is the direction vectors when you're trying to find the angle between two lines. You don't care about these initial position vectors, a point on the line, no interest to you. You just care about the direction vectors of the line. Okay, so that's the sort of theory behind it. I'm going to rub all this away. I'm going to do a bit of defining here. I'm going to say, we'll, with regard to line L1, okay, I'm going to define the vector A to be defined to be the direction part of the line L1. So I'm going to say that is equal to um, minus 6i uh, plus 8j at minus 2k. Okay, and I'm going to let, it, with regards to line L2, I'm going to let B, I'm going to define this vector B to be the direction vector of this line, namely 1i uh, plus 3j plus 2k. Now how do I find the angle between two lines? Well I use what's called the dot product and I use the following key formula. That A dot B is equal to the size of A, the modulus of A, times the size of B or the modulus of B and the cosine of the angle in between them. Okay, so in particular, to find the angle, I, I rearrange this formula and say that cosine of the angle is a dot b, okay, all divided by the size of a times the size of b. Okay, so that's the formula I'm going to use, and all I need to do now is work out a dot b, work out the modulus of a and modulus of b, and rearrange this formula to get what theta must be. And obviously, uh, as well, make sure I'm getting the acute angle between the two. Okay, so now I've defined these vectors A and B, it makes filling things out a whole lot easier for me. So, what is A dot B? What is, minus 6 times 1, which is minus 6, 8 times 3, which is 24, 
and minus 2 times 2 which is minus 4 you add those together and you get 14 okay good well what's the modulus of a what's the size of vector a well it's the square root okay of minus 6 squared okay plus 8 squared plus minus 2 squared okay and you work that out and it's the square root of 104 okay and you do the same thing with b you work out the size of b and it's the square root of 1 squared plus 3 squared plus 2 squared okay 1 add 9 uh, add 4 and it's going to be the square root of 14 okay so actually we're nearly there now let's just uh, plug these into our formula I'll change my color of my pen here cosine theta is therefore equal to a dot b which you said was 14 okay divided by um, the modulus of a is the square root of 104 times the modulus of b is the square root of 14 okay type that in your calculator and you end up getting, uh, leaving it with square roots, uh, my calculator says that the answer in fully accurate form is the square root of 91 over 26, if you've got a calculator that does that for you. Then inverse cos it, so theta must be the taking the inverse cos of the square root of 91 over 26. I think this is 0 0.3 something. Okay, you work that out, you inverse cos that answer, and you get the answer that theta is 68.5 degrees to three significant figures. Okay, uh, it's an acute angle, so you're done there, and you've given your answer in the exam to 3SF. Okay, um, part two. It says that L1 and L3 are parallel. Find the value of C. Now, if two lines are parallel, that means their direction vectors are multiples of each other. Okay, so if we know that, well, we know that this vector must be a multiple of that vector there. Well, is it? Well, if I times this by minus 2, I get minus 6. If I times this 1 by minus 2, I get that. So what must C be so that if I times it by minus 2, I get 8? Or the other way of looking at it, you could say, uh, first of all, you should say scale factor is minus 2 and then C must be equal to therefore C it's a number this time sorry C C is simply 8 divided by minus 2 which is minus 4 if C is minus 4 this vector here okay uh, this vector here will if I multiply it by minus 2 I'll get that vector so they are then multiples of each other so if two lines are parallel, they're multiples of each other. What is the multiple of scale factor? It was minus 2. Knowing that I had to times all of this by minus 2 to get that, if I do that 8 divided by minus 2, I get that C must be minus 4. Okay, now for part 3, I'll use a different colour pen. It actually says, forget about what you did in part 2. L2 and L3 uh, and above. L2 and L3 now intersect find the value of C. Okay, so if they intersect, the equations of their lines must be equal to each other at some point. So with regards to L2, I'm just going to tidy up the equation of this line here. I'm going to call that uh, line R2. Okay, I'm going to say it was 3i plus a ti. So it's 3 plus ti how many j's? It's minus 8 uh, plus 3t j plus 3t j and it's no uh, k plus uh, 2t k so it's 2t k. I've just written that uh, equation of the line in a more simple format for me. I'm going to do the same with line L3. It's 2i plus 3u so it's 2 plus 3ui it's 1 plus cuj, so 1 plus cuj, and it's 3 plus uk, so 3 plus uk. 
Okay, now why are we interested here in the whole line and not just the direction? In, in previous parts, the directions of the line were important to tell us the angles between the line. But if the two lines intersect, we need the whole equation of the line uh, to make it equal to the other equation of the line where they intersect to find the values. Now, if L1 and L2 intersect, the I's must be the same, the J's must be the same, and the K's must be the same. So let's write out our um, equations from that. 3 plus T must equal 2 plus 3U. It must be. There's equation 1. Minus 8 plus 3T must equal 1 plus CU. Equation 2. And 2T must equal 3 plus U. Equation 3. Okay, so all we're going to try and do here is eliminate uh, T and U to find what T and U are and then hence find what C is. Right. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to uh, multiply the top equation uh, by 2 to start with. So I'm going to say that 6 plus 2T equals 4 plus 6U. I'm going to call that equation 4 and I'm going to just note that I've already used that equation. The reason I'm doing that is now with equation 3 and 4 I can eliminate T's by taking these equations away from each other. So if I do equation 4 subtract equation 3 6 minus 0 is 6 and 2t minus 2t is, is nothing. So I just get 6 on this side, 4 minus 3 is 1, and 6u minus 1u is 5u. And then solving for u, subtract 1 and dividing by 5, I get that u must be 1. Okay? Now, I've used equations uh, 1, 3, and 4 to get this. Let's plug it back into uh, any of these equations to get what t must be. Uh, putting it back into equation here, 2t must be 3 plus 1 is 4, so t must be 2. So if u is 1, t is 2, okay, so uh, then we can use that to work out what c must be. Okay, so then I, I would just then say in 2, we would have minus 8 plus 3 lots of 2 is equal to 1 plus C lots of U, where U is 1, okay? Minus 8 plus 6 is equal to 1 plus C. Minus 8 plus 6 is minus 2. Minus another 1, I would get C is therefore equal to negative 3. Now, I've done a lot of work now. I would just, if I was checking in an exam, I would take a moment just to see my answers work. So I was dealing with... Um, let's look back on it, um, L2 and L3, and I've got myself that U is 1, T is 2, and C is minus 3. Let's just check that the equations are equal at that point. Okay, now, equation L2, if T is 2, I would get the coordinates. 3 plus 2 is 5, uh, minus 8 plus 6 is minus 2, and 2 times 2 is 4. I would get that in line L2, so L2 would have that value. And what would I get in L3? Let, let's just check in L3. Well, L3 has U equal to 1 and C equal to minus 3. So this equation here, 2 plus 3 lots of 1 is indeed 5. 1 plus minus 3 lots of 1 is minus 2. And 3 plus 1 is 4. They, do in, they are indeed the same position vector at that point. Hence, I've solved that um, problem for us, and really, it was a nice, easy w way to end a call for paper. I hope you found the following useful in your revision.